After more than seven years, this week, Pope Francis summoned all cardinals for an extraordinary consistory. On August 29th and 30th, the Holy Father met with 197 princes of the church, as cardinals are also known. They discussed the state of the church around the world. A special focus was given to the new constitution of the Vatican, which came into effect in June this year. It brought a reorganization of the Curia, the church government. This was the first time since 2015 that the cardinals had the opportunity to meet each other in person. They were joined by 20 new ones that Pope Francis had created just two days before, on August 27th, in an ordinary consistory. Almudena Martinez, who covers the Vatican for Asi Prensa with a special focus on Latin American countries, shares her impressions from the consistory. We have seen uh, the, maybe the most universal consistory these past days here at the Vatican, uh, where cardinals went from all over the world. We have seen from uh, the Pope Francis name and cardinals from Nigeria, Korea, uh, the first one named in uh, Paraguay, even the youngest that comes from Mongolia. We uh, could talk with uh, the cardinals named the past Saturday uh, that come from Colombia and Paraguay. Uh, it was the first name in Paraguay after 400 of years years of history of the church there. They were very impressed, very honored, and they told us that they have a really big uh, responsibility. EWTN executive editor Matthew Bunsen is an expert on the College of Cardinals. We asked him how he perceived the meeting and what it means for the church in the coming years. We're here in St. Peter's Square just before the final mass of the consistory will take place this year. Pope Francis will address it one more time the faithful and, of course, the newly created cardinals and all the other cardinals he summoned here to Rome to discuss Predicate Evangelii, the new constitution of the Vatican. But Matthew, do we know anything else about this extraordinary consistory that took place here? Yes, well, we know that uh, Francis has brought all of the College of Cardinals together. That in itself is significant. Uh, Francis, we know, has been talking with them. But more important, I would argue, from the standpoint of the College of Cardinals, is for the Cardinals to be able to talk to each other. Yes, they've been divided up into language groups uh, to facilitate better communication amongst themselves. But this is still a, a major opportunity for them to talk, to get to know each other, to size each other up a little bit, uh, especially as we move inexorably, we don't know when, but toward a future conclave. What does that mean for the church and for the future of the church? I think it's a combination of several things. Uh, with Francis, a lot of these appointments are very personal. So these are people that he sees as uh, kindred spirits uh, who sort of share some of his ideas about pastoral care, about accompaniment. But then there's also that idea, again, of hearing all from the corners of the church. Uh, cardinals who represent places like Tonga and Rabat uh, and New Zealand, places that historically have not had major representation in the College of Cardinals, but that Francis wants to make sure they were hearing. It, it makes in many ways uh, anticipating or even handicapping what a future conclave could look like virtually impossible because we don't know what the, the cardinals are actually are thinking. Of the 20 newly created cardinals, only 16 will be able to vote in a future conclave for the next pope because they are younger than 80 years. Altogether, there are 132 who have the voting age. The majority of these were created by Pope Francis, who appointed more and more cardinals from non-European countries. This pays tribute to the growing strength of the Church in Asia and Africa. At the final Mass, Pope Francis was clear in his message to all his cardinals, regardless of their origin. He reminded them that we have the same mission to evangelize the world as the Apostles 2,000 years ago. In Rome, Andreas Tonhauser, EWTN News, In Depth.